So, again, when it comes to reductions, you should know all the issues, like how do we diagnose it? It's a flat death plate. Uh, you can also do a Dugas test. Like, uh, I want to test to see if he has normal function of his axillary nerve by testing sensation of the lateral deltoid, um, which is not as important because we're going to do it anyway. Uh, but more significantly, I want to test to see if his axillary artery has been injured because that contraindicates the reduction process. So, I'm going to take a pulse, see if he has a normal pulse, nice pulse. Take my fingers way high into the axilla to feel for a pulse valve mass absence or weakness of the pulse or a pulse valve mask would contraindicate the procedure and that's when you call 911 and um, explain to them that this is a significant risk of mortality and morbidity and so get your acid out here. So we have a couple different ones. The first one is Milch, is that accurate? Mm -hmm. Coker's birth, okay. So with the Coker method, what I'm going to do is with his arm now remember, he can't put the arm all the way to the side. It's going to be abducted a little bit. And that's good. That's why he can't do the Dugas test, because he can't bring it into abduction. And that allows me to get my fingers up here. And of course, you should also be saying to the patient, I want you to relax as much as you can, slow, deep breathing. I am not do anything you don't want me to do. Keep looking in my eyes as we go through these processes. It's all about getting them to relax it makes it more effective. Now I'm going to take a broad contact on the forearm with my thumb medial, and I'm going to distract, and it's going with me. And when it reduces, usually this is where it reduces, kaplunk. We maintain distraction and external rotation, bring the elbow to the midline, and then internally rotate. Sometimes it's the internal rotation that causes it, but mostly it's the external rotation that causes it. And then we just keep them in this position. We're either mobilizing here and sling and swath or duct tape or something and go off that trip. Okay? Is that how you can you just set up again right here? I just want to see where your arms are. Just like that. Okay. Distract, externally rotate. Okay, so you can't do it the other way because it's what do you mean? Like if you switch hands and you distract with the other hand because then, then you would be I think the problem is then you can't do this. Okay. okay. Okay, then the Milch is next? Yeah. Right. So Milch method, this is my favorite. We got the humeral head sticking right here. I place my thumb inferior to the humeral head. And again, for the woman, she covered the breast. And uh, the purpose of the thumb is to prevent the humeral head from displacing inferiorly as I maneuver it. Same thing, so I'm not doing anything you don't want me to do. I want you to relax as much as you can. And I slowly bring him into abduction and external rotation all the way up over his head. Once you're here, a lot of times it'll reduce on its own, but if it doesn't, you just put a little pressure on it, puts it back in place, and you bring the arm into abduction, I'm sorry, internal rotation and abduction into that sling and swath position. Go get x-rays. Now, sometimes, and we actually had a case in which Duke this happened to, can't do it with abduction external rotation, but could do it with flexion external rotation. Doesn't matter how you get up here, it just matters that you get up here. And once you get up here, a little bit of pressure puts it back in place. You bring the arm back into this position and immobilize and go off that trip. So you got a little bit of pressure at the end when you're pulling or when you're using your knee to. When I'm at the, the pressure is directly on the humeral head okay. with my finger. Again, once I an orthopedist do this, uh, this was at a rugby event. And, and again, a lot of times they're already reduced here, but he, this guy wasn't. And so now he's playing games. He goes, hey, look at this. Plop. And just pop back in and then put it back in there. And you bring them all the way up to full abduction? Full abduction, external rotation. Yeah. And the same with flexion. And when you say that um, sometimes you can't do it all the right. way up because they're in so much pain? That's right. Or because... It hurts too much. The dislocation is not letting it go up the It's just because it hurts too much. Okay. Yeah. Right. And, it, you know, can't stress enough. Some people you just can't touch. And it's very, very important. That doesn't mean you're a bad chiropractor. It just means they need drugs. And again, large amounts of alcohol, if nothing else is available, have been reported <laughs> as an option. You know, large amounts of alcohol. Keep drunk on his ass. But, you know, can, other medications better. And really the best is they inject xylocaine right into the joint capsule. And it's really easy to do. The FAIRS method. So now we're just going to shake hands. 
same thing. So I want you to relax as much as you can. Uh, just let it kind of fall. And now the key here, and then what made this different, it's kind of new, maybe a few years back, is that we're going to move them. So we're going to do about two inches up and down. And so what are we doing here? We're, we're creating a proprioceptive stimulus to help him forget this pain. You know, it's like a tens effect. Okay, that's all what that's about. And I very gradually bring in a little bit of distraction, very gradually bring him into 90 degrees. And you're talking about the game and, you know, whatever it is that you want to be talking about. And then at about 90 degrees, we're going to start to externally rotate. We're going to keep externally rotating and by about 120 degrees back into place. And you can feel it happen. You can hear it happen. And when it happens, you bring your arm back into this position. Immobilizing. Always go out for x-rays. And so there's a big rule. You don't have to have x-rays before you reduce. You always have to have x-rays after you reduce. And I can't stress this enough. Fractures don't always hurt. I experienced that with this shoulder. I dislocated the shoulder and fractured it. Didn't feel like it was fractured. I even joked with the tech. You know how people say, it's not fractured, this isn't fractured, and sure enough it was. And so you've got to be careful about that. If there is a fracture, about 5% of the time there's fractures. Um, it has to do with how big the fracture is, and if it's displaced, whether or not that has to be treated as well. So that's where you're going to consult with an orthopedist. Well, there's different things that can fracture. That's a good question. But there was one that was the divot, the posterior. Well, so, the so yeah, so we have, let's talk about this. There's a bunch of different things that can happen. So there's something called the hatchet lesion or the hill sax lesion. That's the one. So that's a compression fracture of the humeral head. We don't do anything about that. Then we have the bony bank art lesion. And so sometimes, depending on how big it is, sometimes we've got to do something about it, sometimes we don't. You know? And then you can also get avulsions from the rotator cuff attachments on the greater and lesser tubercles. Again, how big they are and how displaced they are determines whether or not they need to be treated surgically or we just let it heal. And so those are all factors that anytime there's a fracture, that's where we're going to consult with an orthopedist. And it's where, you know, you want to have someone on your team, and that's actually a great time to get someone on your team, you know. And, you know, by the way, wherever you live, you know, a good way to look into this stuff is call other chiropractors. You know, what, kind, what orthopedist do you use when you have to refer out? That have been there for a while, and they can tell you, oh yeah, this guy screwed up my patient, this guy is pretty good. And if you're into sports, find a sports chiropractor who does this kind of stuff. And again, there's sports orthopedists, and there's regular orthopedists. Regular orthopedists, what do they do? They fix broken hips. If you're walking, you're fine. Sports orthopedists, they want people to have maximum function. And so different people go to different doctors. Would you ice them? Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Might make you comfortable. Absolutely.